for attending this talk. I'm going to talk about class. It is a system that will automatically score contemplative landscapes. This work is together with uh, Lucas Nankas. He was a, a student that uh, I was supervising, so he did most of the work. Uh, Agnieszka Olszewska. She's an architect and uh, the real brain behind the work. And uh, from me. So, what is our motivation? Uh, there is two parts in our motivation. First is, why do we call our landscapes contemplative? Contemplative is a new term, and we use it in order to describe to, okay, to describe high aesthetics of a landscape that they are environmentally friendly and that they assist in the mental health. So this is a, an example of two very nice contemplative uh, landscapes, and I will focus a little bit on the mental health. Why? Because it's been shown that contemplative. Uh, landscapes help in reducing the stress, helping us uh, rest from mental fatigue. Also, it recovers our attention, it uh, regulates our emotions, and uh, assists us in concentration. And that is something very important. Second, why do we want to be automated? Well, first of all, everything that is automated is cheaper. Second, it is faster. It's much easier to ask a, a software what is its uh, opinion than collecting a group of people, a group of experts to answer your opinion. And third, it is objective. And this is something that also Nicholas mentioned in his talk in, in a way. You could have a set of experts talking about a landscape and they will try to give you the, their most professional opinion but still they will be they will have their own personal opinion and they will not be fully objective and they will differ between them. Then you could try to make a survey, collect a thousand of people to answer whether they like or not this landscape. And okay, this will be a little bit more objective because you will have a lot of people and it will normalize, but that will be very slow and very inefficient to actually perform. So this is the reasons why you want something like a software to answer you if, if a scenery, if a landscape is contemplative or not, automated. Okay, so what did we have? Well, we had uh, Agnieszka, which is over there if you want to do landscape questions uh, to her, taking a, a world tour, not really a world tour, but going to some very famous parks and taking very nice pictures of them and uh, collecting a data set of contemplative scenery. So we created uh, an initial uh, landscape data set with 70 pictures. In order to score the images, we used seven different features of the images, of the landscapes, which they are not uh, computerized at all, actually. Well, with the exception of uh, maybe color and light, which is it is something that the computer can uh, understand. So first, we use the layers. The layers is uh, how far you could say you could see in the landscape. How big is your vision? Second is the landform. <clears throat> how nicely the shape of the scenery. Uh, then is the vegetation. The vegetation is important to have uh, biodiversity. And uh, then is the color and light. Okay, this is the simplest. You have to have a, a, a colorful and brightful uh, scenery in order to be better. Ah, uh, one is the worst score, six is the best score. So here you can see what is the best for each of the future. Then is compatibility. How compatible uh, a future is how harmonic and how much it helps the balance. Uh, then there are the archetypal elements. This is elements that are into your landscape, like um, a statue, a weird, a nice tree, and uh, <clears throat> other different um, characteristics. 
And finally is the character of PC designers. Okay, what is the computer task now? Well, it's a regression problem in practice. We have uh, as an input large scale images, and we want to get an output of, uh, well, seven scores from one to six plus their combination. Okay, the combination is easy. But in, in, in the end, we need eight different scores. Uh, for example, if we look at this image, this is the scores, the average scores from the experts. So they gave for a layer 3.8, for the landform a 2.3, for the vegetation a 4, light color 4.4, so forth, to an average of 4.17 for this uh, landscape uh, scenario. So we want an automated pro program that does that in order to not be the experts anymore. Well, fortunately, computer vision has plenty of methods that uh, can help us. So we started uh, looking to the literature, took what was uh, most accessible uh, for us and most understandable from uh, our student that was doing the work, and we started making some regression models. So, we implemented several K-means clustering uh, models and uh, one uh, K-means neighbors uh, models. The details, of course, are in the paper. In total, there were nine different uh, models. The difference between uh, our K-means models is uh, mainly on the features we are using and maybe some other small uh, tuning parameters. So for the K-means clustering, we used all these features they're all uh, features taken from literature. Each future is better on something. And as in practice, we have seven different scores that we are trying to compute, and we have seven different, in practice, regression problems. You cannot guess which future will uh, perform better for each of the problem, for each of the different seven uh, scores that we are trying to compute. So, okay, we took as much as we can, as we could, in the time frame we had, and tested it. And we also did one K uh, nearest neighbors, and as we're going to see, it actually would perform quite well, even if it's a simpler method. So, what are the results of our work? This is for uh, the layers future. We calculate the mean square error. Uh, one, uh, co one important contribution of this work is the first work of its kind. So we have nothing to compare uh, against but ourselves for the time being. So among, all, among the models we used for the layers, actually the K and N with, uh, with SIFT uh, for feature extraction performed the best. The performance, we would say it's okay. Uh, for our standard, and you will see in the end, uh, the final results actually were quite good. For uh, landform, again, the KNN SIFT uh, performed very well. The, for vegetation, it's uh, again the same. But the moment we change and we go to color and light, which, as we could guess, it is a computer, it's a, a better computer defined problem, we can see that the models perform very well. Uh, it's a K-means with a segmented self uh, uh, future extraction that performs the best. But again, K and SIFT didn't perform bad at all. Actually, it came second. And this is something that was uh, really interesting that in general, K and SIFT was, if you would see it in the average, even if it's a simpler uh, approach, it performed uh, in the average better than the others. Okay, then compatibility. Well, I personally cannot uh, understand that uh, future, but the computer is pretty good at it <laughs> for some reason. So, in compatibility, our models uh, performed very well with segmented surf again being um, the best and almost as good as uh, SIFT. Uh, the archetypal elements, the mean eigenvalues uh, perform the best. 
Actually, that should have been expected because it's uh, used for uh, locating objects. So it should make uh, sense. And it has a significant uh, better score than the other models. For the character of peace and silence, okay, we result again back to the KNN shift uh, for the better for the better performance. And again, the the program performed uh, all, almost all models performed well. But funny enough, segmented surf, which was the best for color, light, and other features, here performed uh, significantly bad compared with the other models. Okay, so what we want to do in the end? Well, we want to combine all those models. So we, pay, we take the best for each of the features and we combine them to one big model that in the end combines the scores just by doing the average to compute the total score. Well, this is uh, the least contemplative uh, landscapes from the first 40, from the group of the first 40. And uh, our system computes uh, 325, well I think the average from the user, from the, from the architects was around uh, 317, something like that. So our system did quite well actually for uh, for this uh, landscape. And uh, this is the final result. So the combined model computes this course while the experts have computed this course. Okay, so this is what uh, this is our, what we did for our initial work, but we are thinking a, a big future for class. And uh, it's a twofold future. One is from the side of the architects and one is from the side of um, computer science. So I'll start with the computer science because it's easier for me to explain. First, we want to test with artificial neural networks. We expect to have uh, better results or at least improve some of the features with artificial neural networks. Uh, second, we need, a, we need to improve our, our landscape database. And we need to use an automated way for that. It takes too much time to actually compute uh, images. So we have to improve our model to use reinforcement learning. When we will classify something, if it's something that it's missing from the database, it should return to the database. And uh, eventually, we want to release class as a web service so that it's accessible to, to the wide audience. So this is for the computer science. Now, what do we want class to be used from, for from the architect's point of view? Well, and now, usually there are committees from, the, from governments or from institutions that they will plan for the, for the urban spaces. We would like to start using them, especially for mental health uh, institutions. We want to improve our environments and we want to improve even the existing ones. And this would be a very, it would be a first step. I guess my time is, uh, yeah, it's the amount of time, so. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much.